Hello Virgo. So I finished up that uh, special twin flame reading for you guys and um, Anarchy Joe Michael came through and said that I actually need to do a um, kind of like an educational message to help everyone. So this will be the first one that I've done of this. I know I've mentioned doing it before, but this is this is the first one where it's, it's not a reading, it's just truly to impart some, some information to help you with your journey because twin flames really are at a pivotal point right now. And if you're not a twin flame, which majority of people are not, because um, twin flames, they, they really are indeed rare. There's only 208,000 in the world. There's not, not many of them. But for twin flames that are out there, this is a pivotal time. It is um, a very important time for twins. Um, Union is upon us, union is starting to occur, but there are some, you know, some things that, you know, because we are in the midst of our timeline. Twin flames are, so there is a timeline. <laughs> Most of us will actually be in union. Um, the schedule is to have everybody or, you know, there's going to be out some outliers, but in order for that to occur, there's a, there's a bunch of healing that has to happen. But for others, everybody has a different timeline. It's not going to happen at the same time for everybody. And that's because we all have different um, things that we're learning, different things that we're developing, growing, healing, releasing. But one of the things that's that's a block, you know, in that video I mentioned um, that things are not what they seem in your union and that um, many twin flame unions will have a third party involved in their union. But it's not what you think more times than not. It's not what you think. Um, typically, these are situations where it's it's a, a lover, a partner, a spouse, ex-spouse. But a lot of times it's, it's a partner that they, it's like an ex, but they keep going, they keep bouncing back to that person. And um, what tends to happen is, now these are the norms, there are gonna be things outside the norm, but typically what happens, if there is a third party involved, he will continue to go back to this ex, this person of his, and can't seem to break break the ties with that person. Well, meanwhile, the divine feminine's like, what in the world, he's a cheater, he's lying, he's, he's deceiving me, well, not lying, because he won't come right out and lie, he just won't share the details of what's going on. But he'll just keep disappearing and, and you know, keep going back to this person. And it doesn't make sense. But what I found with all, all my clients and my own experiences is, is that things, things really are not what they seem. What, what you'll find, and, and not what they seem in a couple different areas. So there's like the physical area. So you may find once you do come into union that, you know, he was physically stuck in a contract with her. Maybe they shared property or they had a shared business. Um, for some, there's like shared estates. Um, like a family member had passed and there was a shared estate, but you know, he had to continue to play nice and, and, and be in this agreement to, to get his portion of the estate. But there, there's truly a, a, a contract, a binding contract that kept him stuck. Now with many of the others, what you'll find is, you might find both actually with some of them, but you'll find it's actually a spiritual contract that keeps, keeps him stuck. And it's usually a contract with a feminine. And it's funny because the, the, the feminine, I have all these clients and you know, there are some actually true males that are actually the divine feminine, they open up first. Um, but they get so frustrated, you know, why do they keep going back to that person? And why won't they break themselves free? And, and why don't they see what this is? And, and they really get mad at their twin and they, and they get mad at that person because they're like, oh my gosh, this person's really wrecking their life. They're keeping this from moving forward. They're keeping us all stuck. Because what you'll find with twins is <laughs> when, you, when you have things stuck in the union, other areas of your life get stuck too. Now, bear in mind, divine timing is at play. So they will often have you hanging, suspended, stuck in a moment while they're taking care of other things for you, for them, for the other parties involved, because there's a lot of factors. But you, but you will, you'll be stuck and you'll be like, why is, why is this person impacting our union? What in the world is going on? But I have found with uh, nearly all of my clients in that situation, as well as myself, that it's actually the contract with the divine feminine from a past life. And then that person is now with your twin in this lifetime. To share a little bit of my experience. So I, my twin kept going back to, to an ex of his. And if you would have asked him, he'd probably be like, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why I keep going back. I, you know, it's not good. I don't, I just, I don't understand. I don't know why, but I feel um, obligated or I feel stuck. Um, he probably kind of felt a sense of like being controlled, like pulled back to that and, and not understanding why. So, um, I had had a past life regression about four and a half years ago and this woman had done this past life regression and, and it was a life of mine and I had this husband and our our child had drowned at a very early age, about five years old. And um, then this husband of mine was like leaning over my, my face as I was passing away, also very young myself, saying that he was never gonna let me go. I'm never letting you go. So the woman that had done my regression was asking me a bunch of questions and I wasn't giving her answers. And, and so she said to me, whatever it is with this lifetime, 
is going to have to be healed and released and you are going to figure it out and you are going to heal and release it but that is why you are stuck in every area of your life because of what happened in that lifetime so you need to figure it out in order to move forward and so here I am like, no, that's why I paid you to help me figure it out. But there was, there was no information coming from me on that. Um, she said, no, nope, it's all on you. You've got to figure it out. So fast forward uh, probably about a year and a half ago. Oh my gosh, probably almost two years now. Um, I was doing dishes. And typically Jesus will come in and tell me I have to cancel a soul contract with someone when I'm doing dishes. So I was told that I had to cancel a soul contract with someone. And so I said, you know, okay. And I sat down and... In comes this this ex well this husband of mine from that lifetime and um, as I'm staring at him getting ready to cancel a soul contract his face morphed into the face of my twins ex I went to proceed forward because when you do soul contract cancellations you ask you know that person if they would like to cancel the contract with you if they say no you just let them know you're gonna proceed and move forward and it, and it will still be effective so I asked her if she wanted to she he wanted to cancel a soul contract with me and she said no she was very angry furious and I said, well, okay, I respect that, but I'm, I'm going to cancel it. And so did that. So I thought it was effective, um, but it, it wasn't. <laughs> it did what it was supposed to at that time, but it was not completely over yet. So I was told, again, doing dishes. It's always like, I'm always zoning out. It must be because I zone out and I stare out the, the glass doors and, and they catch me. But again, Jesus popped in and he said, you know, it's time, child. And I'm like, it's time for what? It's, it's time to, to end this whole contract. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I sit down and I had never seen this past life of mine in its entirety. Because what happens is people are always like, oh, I wanna learn about my past lives and I wanna do past life regressions. They will not allow you to see your past lives unless there's something you have not learned from that or something you need to heal from that. Because if, if you've learned everything from that life and you've released it, there's no need to go back and relive it and see it. Um, but they will bring those lifetime experiences to you if you have not healed them at the moment that it is time for you to heal and release it in order to move forward. So I sit down and they finally show me this, this past life in its entirety. And this husband of mine was very physically abusive, verbally, sexually abusive, um, not just with me, but also with our young child. And um, he had let our child drown on purpose. Um, and he was glad that our child drowned. Well, our child is my twin, Flame. Um, but he was very cruel. And within a year and a half or so of our child drowning, I passed on as well from a broken heart. And that's why he was very angry when he was leaning over me when I was, you know, crossing over to the other side. Um, so fast forward, that husband of my lifetime, our child, which is my twin, that he let drown, is now his ex in this lifetime. And it's not her. It's this dark thing. Because I'm so they finish showing me this lifetime and then they bring my twin. And I, and I can always tell there's going to be something dark when I've got Jesus on one side and Archangel Michael on the other. Because at that point I had started doing deep possessions. And so I was asking them, you know, <laughs> after it was all done, you know, why, why did you guys let me think that this was effective when we did this, you know, a year and a half earlier? And they're like, well, because you weren't yet, you were not yet ready to handle something this dark. But now you're ready. And, and I saw why. Because they brought in my twin and then they brought her in which was the husband. And same thing, I got to see this husband of that lifetime morphed into her and all of her features, but then I got to see this demonic reptilian thing that was possessing her, that was controlling him, controlling me, that past lifetime and this lifetime. So I had to do a deep possession because it wasn't her. I mean, typically if someone has a lot of anger and things, it's because there's something possessing them, something inside of them that's doing that because we are made in the likeness of God. We are here, we are of love. So if it's not of love, there's something else causing that for that person. And um, once the depossession was done, I went over to help her up. She didn't know who I was, she didn't know who he was. Let her know that we love you. We're old friends, we're here to help. Asked her if she would be willing to cancel the soul contract with us. She was very amicable. She's like, well, yeah, let's do that. And so we finally canceled the soul contract. And at that point, Jesus said, it's finally over. It's finally done, finally finished. Um, and I don't know from his end what they did because I didn't share that with him. Now, for all I know, on his end, he probably realized around November, December when that happened, that he was finally able to start disentangling himself from her. Whereas in all these years in the past, he couldn't do it and couldn't even explain. If you would ask him, he probably could not even explain why. I just feel stuck. I don't know why I can't free myself from this. But at that point, he probably 
had the relief to be able to finally start free himself. Because the interesting thing is, it sounds woo-woo and spiritual out there, but when, when there is a depossession that has to happen, it really does physically impact the person's life and those around them. Um, my first depossession was actually with a close family member of mine. And I had for a long time kept having to cut these cords between her and I because I would just feel overwhelmed with this anger. And I even asked her about it at one point. I said, do you sometimes just feel overwhelmed with anger and fury and just being filled with hatred and anger? And she's like, yeah, I do. And I don't know, I don't know why. And I, and I don't know what to do about it. And I'm like, okay, well, I just had continued to cut the cords, cut the cords. And, and one day I was told I had to sit down and do a, a soul contract cancellation. So I sat down at Jesus on one side, Archangel Michael on the other. And in comes this family member of mine. And then her face morphed into this reptilian demonic looking thing. Um, and one of its arms sprouted out to go and grab me. And Archangel Michael cut the arm off and said, no, not anymore. You're done. It's over today. And Jesus leaned over and told me, tell it to get out of her child. Command it to get out. And I was like, no, because I was terrified. I was physically trembling. I've never been so scared. And I'm like, no, 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 Jesus, you, you tell it to get out of her. And he's like, no, little one, you have to realize your power. Command it to get out of her. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Archangel Michael, can you tell it to get out of her? And he's like, no, little one, it's your time. You have to do this. I'm like, okay, okay. And so commanded it to get out. It was probably the weakest sounding command ever, but it worked. It was effective. It got out of her. I did not tell this family member of mine that until a few months later, we were talking. I asked her, you know, how, how are you feeling? How have you been doing? And she's like, good. And I said, well, you know, that anger that you were having, are you still having that anger? And she's like, no, no, I'm, I'm not. It's like completely gone. And so I, knowing the date of when we did depossession, <laughs> asked her, I said, oh, so um, has it been gone for about three months? Maybe it stopped around this time. And she's like, yeah, I actually come to think of that. It's exactly when it stopped. She said, it's just great. I, I don't, I don't feel the sadness, the depression, the anger, this f it, it, total hatred, fury coming out of me. She said, I'm just so happy again. I feel amazing. I don't even know why. So these, these things sound spiritual when we went out there, but they really do s physically manifest in our lives. Um, so with that being said, Things are not what they seem with your twin. So if you are in a love triangle with your twin and they continuously go back to someone, please know that there's something spiritual to that. There's a lesson that they're needing to learn. There's a lesson that you're needing to learn. It's likely a soul contract between you and that person. It could be a contract between them. Now, what I've seen with most of my clients is a contract between the divine feminine because with this twin flame journey, it's the divine feminine that starts to, um, starts to, to give birth to this union to start to do the work. Um, so a lot of the stuff stems with contracts with the divine feminine. Um, but what you'll also find with twin flames is one or both of them is going to have someone, a family member, a close friend, a lover, an ex that is possessed by something demonic typically because this there there's a spiritual war going on and um, the dark do not want twins, which we are here embodying love. That's what it is. We're, we are God's love incarnate. There's a spiritual war going on. Dark does not want that love to be spread. So they will, they will attach to your loved ones to try and stop that from happening. So you, you will find that. So with that being said, things are not what they seem. So if you're in a love triangle, um, work on overcoming the, the fear. And um, because bottom line, it all, it all stems down to fear. You're fearful that this person is going to keep you from coming to union with your beloved. So you will experience anger and jealousy and sadness and frustration. And oftentimes um, that is pegged on that person that your, your twin keeps going back to. But it's, 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 not, it's not them. It, it's, it's really a lesson. Um, it's something you may need help. You may need a professional healer to help you and assist you with that. Um, but if you're not to that point and you're not being guided to do those things yet, at least be able to overcome those emotions and come from a place of unconditional love and understanding and know that this is when the time is right, you will, do, you will discover what that lesson is. That is to free the two of you from that um, when the time is right. And, uh, and send that person's, whoever they have that soul contract with, send that person love. Because they are, they are helping you grow. They're helping your twin grow. Um, it may not seem like it the way it's physically manifesting that this person keeps going back to them that you love and want to be with. Um, but they are a soulmate of his and yours.
because soulmates, you know, soulmates are across the board. You can have soulmates that are lovers, um, family members, friends, but you also have soulmates that their purpose truly is to come into your life and turn it upside down and, and cause you a lot of turbulence and heartache and challenges, but that's with the intent that the agreement you made on the other side was so that it would help you grow and evolve. And, and if the person is, if it is something where there is a, a possession, something that needs to be removed, something that's attached to them, it's not that person that's making them act that way, that's, that's got everyone stuck. It's not that person, that person's love too. Um, so just keep that in mind. So if you're stuck in a love triangle, just keep that in mind. Come from a place of love. Try to overcome those feelings, those emotions, because things truly are not what they seem. And along your journey, you'll be given the steps. And that's why it's very important to, to listen to the steps that you're being guided. And if you don't hear Jesus and Angels chat, because we all have different clear skills, different psychic skills. Some of us are seers, some of us are knowers. True twin flames, you're gonna have a strong psychic gift. Mine is hearing, I hear them chat all day long. Um, but you may be a seer. So maybe you're getting images of what your next step is. You may not be ready yet to remove from this, this triangle. Um, because they may be wanting you to focus on opening up maybe your spiritual gifts so you can do a spiritual practice at some point. Or maybe they're trying to get you um, physically relocated. Um, they're trying to get you to move. So they're not having your focus on this connection, this union yet, because it's more important for them to have you doing something else. So whatever signs they're giving you, act on those signs. Take those steps because that's the perfect thing that you're supposed to be doing at that moment. Because, because it's kind of like a puzzle. All the pieces have to fall in. Kind of like with that soul contract cancellation. I thought it was done a couple years ago. No, that was just the little part that had to be done then. And whatever it was doing, because it obviously wasn't, well, for my knowing, it was not impacting me, but it was doing something to help him. But it wasn't complete. But they will have you do what is meant to happen at that time to put that puzzle piece in. So things will fall in as they're perfectly timed, as they're perfectly meant to. All you need to do is follow the steps and, and really truly come from a place of unconditional love, knowing that if there really is a love triangle, things really aren't what they seem. It's going to be okay when the time is right and just keep praying and asking for the guidance. So I hope that that helps all of you. Be filled with a lot of love, joy, and blessings.